Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Celebrating Aviation with Mike Machat. Today we're going to cover three models of one of my favorite airplanes, an airplane near and dear to me, the Republic F-105 Thunder Chief. Before we look at the models, let's dive into the history of the 105. Uh, it was an iconic airplane, legendary machine, uh, loved by anyone who flew it or turned a wrench on it. It first flew in October of 1955 at Edwards Air Force Base, went into service with the Air Force in 1958. Three models were issued that same year, but the 105 was originally intended as a uh, high-speed, low-level, long-range nuclear strike airplane carrying one weapon to a target uh, in the Soviet Union during the Cold War. And the idea was that it would deliver the target to a pop-up maneuver and return to base. The mission changed significantly in the mid-1960s with the advent of the war in Southeast Asia. The 105 was then converted into an air-to-ground attack airplane and nearly half of the 800 plus production run was lost during that conflict. But uh, the 105 earned its place in history. It was retired by the Air Force in February of 1984, and it was an amazing machine. Production was at Farmingdale, New York, and we're gonna look at the first three models issued on the Republic F-105. The first of the three models was from Ravel in Venice, California. And there's a personal story here. As I'd mentioned in other episodes, my uncle, George, worked for Republic for 32 years as a chief engineer. He designed the windshield and canopy and later the rocket ejection seat on the 105. And I remember him coming uh, over for a family dinner one Sunday night and he was so excited because he had met Ravel engineers from California who were in the plant researching the 105 for a new model that was gonna come out about a year later. And he was so impressed that Ravel uh, would send uh, representatives to the plant to study the airplane in detail. So when you see this uh, mark on the cover scaled from official blueprints, they weren't kidding. They were in the plant researching the jet. Let me show you the beautiful Ravel S Republic F-105 kit from 1958. The box art by Dick Cushati is absolutely stunning. The airplane is flying at Mach 2 toward the sun, and it's a pretty dramatic image. But uh, let's take a look inside. And here you've got absolutely pristine, beautiful decals. I was always intrigued as a modeler at the unique uh, geometric shapes of the landing gear door decals, uh, both on the star that you see here and the U.S. Air Force title, and how they integrated. Once the gear doors were retracted, uh, they looked like this. But uh, when the gear was down, as you see in this photo of the buildup, it was an unusual geometric uh, pattern on the gear door. Let's take the... Uh, decals and directions out and there is your beautiful S kit as it was packed in the box. You got your clear plastic canopy parts, canopy operated and uh, the rest of the model in gleaming silver plastic with the revolving base as you see there. Just a beautiful kit for 89 cents. And here again is a photo of the buildup with the box art. Now that we've seen the Revell kit, let's take a look at two other kits that came out in that same year of the Republic F-105. The second kit of the 105 that was released came from Monogram. This was a beautiful kit and in some ways it looked uh, even more accurate than the Ravel kit. It came with a, uh, a, a crew chief on a ladder, an opening uh, canopy with uh, the pilot figure in the ejection seat, and it had operating features. Uh, the ejection seat was spring-loaded and actually could be triggered out of the airplane, and it had a rotating bomb bay that could release the internal store. Monogram issued the second F-105B, and uh, this box art is one of those art-directed images, uh, and I say this with uh, love and respect to the art directors, but uh, I can just imagine the artist uh, kind of cringing when the art director says, I want the ejection seat with, you know, lines showing come out of the afterburner flame and make sure you put the windshield and have the airplane tilted up, and it would be probably the last thing the artist would have designed on his own. But what they were trying to do was make a compelling box cover uh, for a young modeler to uh, get excited and uh, want to buy the kit. Uh, as we open it up, now, this has a different look than the Ravel kit. It was a little larger scale, and uh, you notice the pieces are in the box as so. We're going to show you in a moment the uh, fuselage halves of each of the three kits uh, for comparison. But uh, again, just the last thing to mention is that being the uh, F-105B, uh, in the early configuration you had the 6 o'clock windows and the canopy and windshield uh, all as separate clear plastic parts. So there's your monogram kit. Now let's take a look at the Aurora kit. The third of the three F-105 kits issued in 1958 came from Aurora in West Hempstead, New York. West Hempstead was all of 10 or 12 miles from Republic's Farmingdale plant, and uh, despite being that close and having engineers that could have researched the jet at the factory, 
The Aurora kit was the least accurate of the three. It had kind of a toy-like quality, and it incorporated some of the features of the YF-105A prototype that you see here in this photo. Nevertheless, it was still a beautiful kit. The box art by Joe Catula was quite stunning, uh, featuring the two uh, YF-105s. And I should mention that all three of these F-105 kits were the YF-105B pre-production prototype. What that meant was this was a non-service uh, airplane. It was only for flight test at Edwards and at Farmingdale, and it featured a three-piece windshield and canopy arrangement with what they called a six o'clock window, which was to allow the pilot to look over his shoulder in air-to-air uh, -air combat and have more visibility out of the cockpit. This was later replaced with a different canopy that you see here, and that was the operational version of the production airplane. But the Aurora kit featured odd uh, external ordnance. It had uh, a flight test boom on the nose. It was just a different looking kit. We're going to look inside this kit and compare it to the other two F-105 kits from Ravel and Monogram. Here's the third member of the F-105 kit family and uh, in my estimation probably one of the coolest box arts uh, for the airplane if not uh, of all time, Joe Catula's uh, night scene of the 105 taking off. I should mention that uh, both these images are derived from factory photos and it was a very skillful way of designing into the cover uh, those two shapes. But uh, as we look inside the box uh, it's very apparent that this doesn't have anywhere near the detail of either the monogram or Ravel kits. And of particular interest is the decal sheet. You saw how complex the Ravel sheet was for all those gear doors. And on the Aurora kit, it's just two pieces. So uh, good luck with that. But uh, as I show you the rest of the model, um, it's very apparent that this does not look like the airplane. And uh, let's actually take a look at the three fuselage sections and compare how those uh, stack up against what was the real airplane that you see in this photo. And finally, a comparison of the three fuselage halves from the Ravel, Monogram, and Aurora kit. Uh, it's pretty evident uh, which uh, company engineers did their homework. And again, nothing personal against Aurora. But uh, when you look at the shape of the other two, and in my estimation, Monogram being the closest to the real airplane, uh, this falls a bit short in terms of what the airplane looked like, mainly in the turtle deck area, the shape of the fin, and the size of the ventral fin relative to the fuselage. The F-105 was powered by a Pratt & Whitney J-75 engine, and that's a pretty massive power plant, and it's the Monogram kit that uh, gets my vote for best depicting the beautiful uh, uh, area rule curved uh, fuselage of the 105. But in one glance, you see uh, three different model companies approach to the same airplane. And uh, back in the day, all three were really cool kits. But by today's standards, they are pretty basic. And so I'm going to end this program by showing you the next step toward what became today's advanced model kits. In 1967, uh, I joined the United States Air Force, and I was assigned to northern Japan for two years. And in the base hobby shop, I walked in one day and there was a, an entire wall full of Hasegawa 172nd scale kits. These were brand new at the time, 1967. And I saw this F-105D. It was the first model of a D, which was the all-weather uh, radar nose version of the F-105 Thunder Chief. And I must have built a dozen of these kits. I just fell in love with it. It represented a whole new generation of models. First and foremost, you see how many more parts there are, uh, the amount of detail. Uh, the plastic had a different sheen to it, it was a darker gray, but uh, this was mainly to serve as a base for the advanced modelers of this time period. Again, we're talking about 10 years after the uh, first Ravel uh, monogram and Aurora kits. And so by this time, uh, modelers were using airbrush and uh, you know, magnifiers and tweezers and all sorts of uh, implements that uh, created a much more uh, refined model when they were finally built. So this is the inside of the box. Let me show you one of two Hasegawa 172nd scale buildups that I made when I was stationed in Misawa, Japan in 1967. The first Hasegawa 172nd scale Thunder Chief that I built was the D model in bare metal and a clean configuration, meaning no external stores or auxiliary fuel tanks. Uh, believe it or not, I kit bashed this uh, using the Ravel landing gear and the Ravel pilot and a few other parts here and there. Uh, I painted the interior of the gear doors uh, zinc chromate and uh, other than that it's just basic silver but uh, I thought it was a very clean model. It's brush painted, nothing fancy, just out of the box and uh, I was just in love with these kits that cost all of 65 cents at the base hobby shop. 
The last kit to show you in the F-105 episode today is the Hasegawa D model in Southeast Asia camouflage. This is a out of the box brush painted uh, F-105 model. And uh, please don't write in the comments, the tail code is not accurate. Uh, and let me show you here, we have the uh, kit bashed uh, Ravel landing gear, some pieces from the monogram kit. Uh, but I feel it's a fair representation of the Southeast Asia era F-105 D Thunder Chief. And this is the example of the Hasegawa kit, which led to today's beautiful models in even larger scales than 172nd. So there you have it. A look at three F-105 kits issued in 1958, the first three ever done on the Republic F-105. I hope you enjoyed this episode. We have plenty more coming for you, so please watch the channel. And until next time, take care.